Good morning, saints. Well, it's not raining yet, but it will be shortly, I understand. So we were to meet in the garden this morning, um, but we will, as a rain date, be meeting in the garden next Sunday. So awesome, awesome. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Okay. We do have coffee hour today. The Missions and Evangelism Committee will also have a meeting while they work. Next Sunday after worship, choir members and anyone interested in hearing more about the choir and other music options are invited to meet to discuss to bring the choir on a limited basis. So it's on August 21st. We are to meet um, here in the sanctuary. And um, the prayer shawl ministry has a new display in the library bulletin board, so please check that out. Are there any other announcements I missed today? No? Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Then we will begin with our call to worship. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. God of the ages, we sing your praises in the vineyards of our lives. Tend the garden of our love. Where we have become ragged and wild, prune us in the way we should grow. Nurture the soil of our hope. Let your hand be upon us, leading us to Jesus, the perfecter of our faith. Heal the roots of our faith. Bring us rain and drought, shade and scorching heat, and protection in the wilderness. Protect the growth of our spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for our opening prayer. Lord of the vineyard, we ask for your presence and your guidance. In your holy wisdom, tend the vines of our hearts. Teach us your righteousness that our lives may flower with justice. We come as wild grapes, yearning to grow fruitful in your love. Show us the way through Jesus, your Son, to discern your will, hear your word, and grow in your ways as we deepen the roots of our faith. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing hymn number 145, Morning Has Broken. seated. At this time of the service, I ask that you please be in a spirit of prayer as we approach the face of Jesus Christ, and please do so with your personal prayer 
of confession. Precious Lord, as we bring our personal confessions to a close, we are thankful that we can go to you at any time and in any place and just have a conversation with you. Lord, you love us so much and you want the best for us that you lead us in the way to be safe and sound and forgiven. Help us, Lord, as we strive to live a life in closer accordance with your ways, Lord. And thank you for forgiving us our sins. Brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. forgiven. Amen. Thank you. Okay, who had the mystery box? Okay, no, 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 you can stay up here. Stay up here. Okay. Is it, is it going to break if I open it? A balloon. Now, question, is there anything in this balloon? Oh, it's a squish balloon. Oh, awesome, awesome. Awesome. It's a squish balloon. That's a great idea. Just flour in it? Really? So how did you happen to make this? I used a funnel and I poured the, and I attached it to the bottom and then I poured the flour in the funnel. And did you make it for today, a mystery box? No? no you had... I made it like last month. Oh. What did you do with it last month? Squished it? You squished it. <laughs> Huh? Play with it. Play with it, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, when you get older, and I hope it's not for a long time, people would keep these on their desks at home or on the counter or something. It's called a stress ball. You know, the kind you, 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 you it looks like a little animal, you squish it and the eyes bulge out. You like that, right? Because sometimes we get nervous. And sometimes we get you know, it's all the things going on, trying to process it and stuff like that. Sometimes school gives us stress. Sometimes our, our friends give us stress. And sometimes, I hate to admit it, sometimes our parents <laughs> give us stress, huh? And I, and, and I hope I never give you stress, but I give you things to think about, okay? This is awesome. Thank you. Um, I used to have one on my desk at work before I became a pastor. And I would squeeze it, and boy, those eyes would come out really fa- far, you know? But it's, it's, it helps us. But you know what also helps us when we're stressed? Is reading Bible scripture, hearing stories of Jesus Christ, hearing stories of all the wonderful, st- all the wonderful things that happened in the Bible, huh? And you guys now have these coloring books, right? There's some good stories in them. Okay, about the Bible. So, you know, color them out and pass them along so people can see what you've got and stuff like that. But, but remember that Jesus Christ is with you all the time. And Jesus Christ loves you all the time. So don't be afraid to go to your mom and dad and say that, that you're a little stressed out. Okay? And, and the same thing for mom and dad... Because we know that Jesus Christ is with us all the time. We can pick up the Bible and read it and get some relief and happiness and joy from that too, okay? Well, thank you very much. Awesome. I was thinking when I looked at it like it was full of water or something, so I'm glad. (laughs) I'm glad. All right, so we're going to do this one this time.
And thank you guys. Who wants to take it for next week? Oh, that's right. Good member. Thank you. Thank you. Richard, here you go. It's all yours. Awesome. Okay. Looking forward to it. Our Old Testament lesson today is from Isaiah, chapter 5, 1 through 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines, and he built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and the people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I shall remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste, and it shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts in the house of Israel and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, he saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Our gospel lesson today is from Luke 12, and if you would please stand as you are able. So this is Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 56. I will come to bring fire to the earth, and how I wished it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. And they will be divided, father against son and son against daughter, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you will immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you will say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You are hypocrites. Know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the principal time? The word of God of us for the children of God. God. While we may bear wild grapes, going astray in the world, God remains faithful, helping us to interpret present times. We call upon God's help today, sure in the knowledge that it will come.
I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear The Son of God discloses And he walks with me And he talks with me And he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks of his voice, his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be but he bids me go through the voice of woe. His voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever Is it up? <laughs> Good morning, saints. Good morning. The passage we just heard read in Isaiah was written as a love song, actually. It says, I'll sing a ballad to the one I love, because the one he loved had a vineyard. A lot of work went into the vineyard. Scripture says the owner pulled the weeds, tilled the earth, he planted only the finest vines, built wine press to actually produce something, a watchtower to be able to see any adversaries that should try to break into the vineyard, and then he built a huge wall around it to protect it all. How many of you have a garden at home? 
It is a thing of glory and joy to see the um, to have a green thumb and have your garden be a work uh, a just a a place to see God's beauty. Now you see, the person who owned the vineyard expected to grow and harvest the best grapes. But even after all of this labor, he grew nothing but garbage grapes. He was devastated and angry. So he tore everything down and let everything go to ruin. Brothers and sisters, the garden in this story was Israel. God nurtured them, brought them back to himself, protected them, helped them grow, but God did not harvest goodness from them. They were murdering each other, they were telling lies, and they were unfaithful to Father God. The people of Israel and Judah were acting against God, So God now admonishes his people in the scripture. He says, when I expected good grapes, why did I get bitter grapes? Well, now let me tell you what I'll do in my vineyard. I'll tear down its fence and let it go to ruin. I'll knock down the gate and let it be trampled. I'll turn it into a patch of weeds, unattended, uncared for. Thistles and thorns will take over. You know, saints, scholars, and theologians refer to this Isaiah passage as the state of the world. But their response to these passages shed some light on the church of Jesus Christ and the local church today. You know, we're all sinners in the need of God's grace. Amen? Amen. But the church is the means through which we meet God. It is not the end of our story. But we must take some responsibility for the state that we are in, be it government, injustice, poverty. These passages are historically used as a call to arms that the local church must also care for what Scripture calls bad grapes to strive to restore good gardens, uh, to restore God's garden in the world and restore the fruits of the Spirit. Originally intended to flourish because God wants us all, good and bad, each of us being made in his image to be given an opportunity for eternal life and living together in the garden. So saints, we are left with the task of how to help the Lord restore the vineyard as it related to our temporal lives and to Christ's church today. You know, as I was preparing a message for today, which was to originally be outside in the memorial garden, I walked our dog Thurston to the garden, and I do that every day. And I sat down on one of the three benches there, Have you ever visited the garden recently and sit down at its benches? And I couldn't help but notice that some of the plants, let's say, have reached the end of their time and the roses, petals laying on the ground, darkish brown petals. But among the branches, among the thorns, Ah, brand new, it's brand new growth, beautiful roses. The other day I picked up a plastic cup, top, and straw someone threw on the ground at the edge of the garden. I looked around and picked up various cigarette papers, cigarette butts, other wrappers, and, and when I went to sit down I had to pick up a lottery ticket and no, the winning number was not there. Now, my first inclination, as it is with many other people, would be to complain to myself how messy and thoughtless people were. I remember sitting um, on the stoop 
uh, on Townsend Avenue in Booth Bay Harbor, right as they called an end to the churches to meet personally because of the pandemic. And what I saw is people somewhat unaffected walking around, just dropping things on the sidewalk as if the world was their garbage can. But there were others who picked up their trash, asked where there was a barrel, and I'd point them in the right direction. I remember thinking, didn't they know it was church property? And I started to think of ways we can get around, what, maybe a fence? What then, lock it? No. At the end of the day, that garden was created to invite people in. The church building is to invite people in. Even if they are messy or uncaring, what a boring place this would be. And then I wondered, what could the church do to draw visitors to the presence of Christ? Maybe a prayer box, maybe something to let that person visiting the garden that this is an extension of the church, not just a place in which to throw trash. You see, brothers and sisters, we are called out of our vineyard, whatever and wherever that is, to care for those who are in need. You know, connect them to Jesus Christ. Connect them some, to some help. Do you, know that the, do you know what the mission is of the United Methodist, Methodist denomination? If you were to go to umc.org, that's the major site. United Methodist Church is based in Nashville, Tennessee. You'd be surprised how many people have heard it, but they misunderstand it. The mission is, the mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. The mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Now, at this point, probably 10, 11 years ago, I was getting mail. Everyone in, in Oak Bluffs has to get mail by way of the post office. So I had gone to the post office to get my mail, and I drove around, and I parked the car right outside the tabernacle area where, where there are gingerbread cottages and a lot of tourists go. But at the entryway of this tabernacle area was a, a posted sign. And everyone who has some kind of event in the local area would post. Well, our church there in Oak Bluffs did the same thing with a supper that was coming up. And we always use the mission of the church at the bottom of that sign. So as I sat in the car, it was a hot day with the open windows, and I was going through my mail, I see from one of the busy streets there was a walkway going in as a shortcut to the tabernacle area, and there were three young ladies, probably ranging from 19 to 22 years old, not a care in the world. And they were looking for something to do, and they were, you know, they couldn't get any closer together as they were walking three broad to, and went to look at the sign, and I could hear one, one girl say, hmm, disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. You see, you see, I knew that the Methodist Church wanted to take over the world. Hmm. Do you remember that, Karen? I said, yeah. So my window was down, I said, excuse me, it's not to take over the world. It's for people to know that there is hope with Jesus Christ. So if you should ever need a dose of hope and a dose of this power of the Holy Spirit, come visit the church. Come visit the church. Hmm. To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That's what we do. And for over seven years, this one of three 
Methodist churches in the tabernacle opened its doors all throughout the day for people to come in and pray. And they came from all over the world. We created a prayer center, which was a simple table with a prayer box and uh, blank prayer sheets that people can leave a prayer. That's all it was, that someone could fill out requests and place it in the locked box, and we had a prayer team pray over those prayers that were left. Over one relatively short summer season, we would get over 600 prayer requests. And we would read every single one. Do you know that a great majority of those prayers every year came from parents? No matter what country they were from, came from parents. And the overwhelming greatest number of requests were for relatively the same thing. Almost every single one said, God, help my child know who God is. And please help my son or daughter get to know who God is and what, what is this power of Jesus Christ. I am afraid for their soul. Hmm. Number one prayer request. Saints, has it ever crossed your mind that, that the people who are unchurched, even people who are churched, people in different communities with different different um, challenges, different um, racial makeup, just all sorts of different things in this melting pot we live in. Some of them may need to access the power of God through Jesus Christ. We don't even know if the person in the pew sitting next to you, what it is that they're struggling with. How important do you think it is, especially for the youth growing up in this world today, to know who Jesus Christ is? Do you think that's important? Mm -hmm. They need to know that God loves them. So this brings me to yesterday's parade. <laughs> yeah. So many young people, so many families, we have no way to know who among them is hurting. We have no way to know the cares and concerns of the community going before us. Saints, we are the church, and we're called to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of our church, our community, and for those we can reach and interact with wherever we are, wherever they are. A call for making disciples is such an important call to arms for us, even today, that it was the first message that Christ gave to his disciples after he was risen on Easter Sunday. That's how important it was to see his disciples in Galilee. So I've got to tell you, yesterday it was wonderful seeing how many volunteers got out in front of the church giving away free steamed hot dogs and steamed buns. Piping hot chili, for those who wanted chili dogs, snack bags of chips and loads of children's books, and tons and tons of cookies. Thank you to Karen and the other bakers who, who baked those cookies for us. And thanks to all those, it seemed that there was activity out in front of the church pretty much all afternoon, even before the parade. Now, I know there's not as many people standing at the side of the road to watch the parade has been as it has been in previous years, I'm told. But it was quite a long parade route. People would stop by, get something to eat, and go on their way. People also stopped on their way back from the parade. Now, thanks to Judd and Bill and all others who showed up during that day to help actually give out those hot dogs. But let me tell you when the magic happened. All the ladies present took action, and instead of Mohammed going to the mountain, the mountain went to Mohammed, as the saying goes. Bobby, armed with some small flyers with our church's name, went to stand at the end of the street where the trucks and floats turned onto Prospect Street. Brenda, Colleen, Bobby, and Melanie each grabbed handfuls of bagged home-baked cookies 
and handed them to the appreciative participants on the parade floats, in the trucks, wherever they could find them, walking down the street. Erica. <laughs> well, she was on the sidewalk, sitting there watching us. She was our cheerleader for the day. Thank you, Erica. And all of it was awesome. Afterwards, Melanie had mentioned that everyone on the floats and walking were giving something to the crowd by being present. Even if it was just being part of the parade, but the church went out to them. The church went out to them. We gave something back to them. And Melanie said they just smiled ear to ear. Everyone got into it. And then, if I'm not mistaken, that excitement gave way to thinking of ways, if we talked for a few moments, of how we can not only provide for the community, its need to eat, and you know, United Methodists love to eat. Amen. Amen. Just like this parade. Being even more in intentional with going out to give back to the community, like the floats and the kids on the floats and the walkers, maybe with an invitation next year to worship at some event at the church. We started to talk about what possible things might we be able to do to engage the kids and their families in this community. You know, saints, as we work together, you're sure to hear from me the importance of adding an extension of evangelism to each single thing we do as a church, even church suppers, parades, etc. Imagine if we can get into the heads of our community families and youth, find out what their challenges are, what their problems are, and then find ways for our church to educate and illuminate them through our ministries. Be it movie nights, game nights, asking a special speaker to come to talk about a topic that really is of interest to our teenagers and families in town. Saints, we are the church, and we make disciples for the transformation of the world, not to take over the world, but that's that, so we can impress upon the world in this community that Jesus loves them and offers hope. Let's think of creative ways that we can give people the opportunities to voice their concerns to God through our church. So this image of a vineyard that God destroys because everything was bad, great. Psst. There's an opportunity there, saints. For within this country, Within this world, there are bad grapes. But each and every one, including ourselves, and every single denomination who worships Jesus Christ, every single denomination, because we worship the same God, we're made in the image of God and beloved of God. So if you travel around and hear of anything else, other communities and other churches, uh, what they've done before to connect to the hurting children, of God, uh, hurting children of God, to the love of Christ. Let Melanie or myself know, anyone on that evangelism committee, because as we communicate together and get the ideas, we, if we can address the hurting children of God that are out there and involve the families in ministries that we do, at Christ in the Center, there's no telling where we can go and who we can touch in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask all this in his holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Saints, let's stand and sing, We Are the Church, hymn 558.
be seated. We come now to the time of the service where we'll hold people up in prayer. The res a response would be, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So let us pray and be in, be in prayer as I mention the names of these people who are in need. Gwen Allenwood, Colleen Harmon, Lynn Jocelyn, Richard and Susan Clark, Audrey Bubar, Ivan Shaw, bless you, Bless you. Gareth, bless you. Bless you. Gary and Marilyn Langley, Debbie and uh, uh, Lynn Sharp, Connie Collins, the family of Cecil Walton, Roger Bossy, Jason Giggy, Ralph and Gwen Ferguson, Sylvia Akeley, Leland Frost, Warren Dobson, Bob White, James Stewart, Richard Card, and Wanda Haynes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you. So anyone else we need to raise in prayer today? No? Okay. I'm just going to pray for um, all those people we met yesterday, all the people who were involved in the parade, all the people who, in their families, that the Lord touches them, that if there's any concerns, any problems weighing on their shoulders that they could, if they are going to a local church, bring that up to the leadership in the church, to their pastor, um, and that they feel the presence of Jesus Christ in this community and in what they do in this community. Um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Lord, we ask that you help us, um, well, we're going to save our Lord's Prayer for the tithes and offering. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> awesome. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here today with us. And now, saints, we have our tithes and offerings, so please come forward as you feel so um, moved. You have already done that with the plate, so I'll please bring up the, the offering as it's been given. Heavenly Father, please accept this humble offering. We know, Lord, that all of our resources we have because of your love for us. And Lord, we know that we all have a job to do. First and foremost is our love for you. Please, Lord, place this offering in the hands of those who can administer it to bring your kingdom closer. And may your Holy Spirit compel us to be in further ministry to you, to perhaps raise someone up if they're feeling low, or pass along someone is in need of prayer, or even, Lord, a telephone call to someone we have not seen for a while. All of it, Lord, is in service to you as an offering to your mission out in the world, which is to bring about the total salvation of humankind. Lord, we thank you for our part in it, Lord, we ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we're going to ask that you help us pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Saints, it's not often that we're like 15 minutes early in a service. 15 minutes. Saints, let's open up our hymnals to 374 for standing on the promises. Saints, do you know why Standing on the Promises is one of the United Methodist Church's most favorite hymns? It's because in the Methodist Church is a lot about its laity. It's a lot about the power going through the veins of our laity from the Holy Spirit. Hmm. So we're standing on the promises that God has made. We can rest assured that God loves us. And rest assured that the Lord will make a way out of no way for us. So I'm here at the end of this service to tell you one thing. And that is if you ever have anything that's hurting your soul. If you ever have anything that's weighing down on you. Even if it's family members. Even if it's without coming in and going out, something that's just 
doesn't see, seem to fit right with us. Leave it at the foot of the cross. Go to Christ and leave that at the foot of the cross. For our cross just asking for clarity about that. And saints, I've been there, I've done that, and I've talked to so many different people. And I'm sure as I get a chance to talk to each one of you, you're going to have your own stories of where you felt the hand of God touch you. And isn't that an awesome thing? And unfortunately, we're growing up in a, in a society and in a world where younger generations may not know even what Christ can do and that power. So saints, whether you want to agree with it or not, you are uniquely made and you are where you are, planted where you are to do the work of God where you are because there's nobody like you, Beth. <laughs> there's no one like you, Karen. So when you leave this place, know that you are blessed and the Lord will make a way out of no way for you. So go out with the power of God with you to transform your life. And maybe a word from you to someone, maybe someone you haven't seen for a while, maybe that word will help, the begin, help begin the process of transformation that that person needs. So may our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless you and keep you. May he make his countenance to shine upon you and give you his peace and his almighty grace. We ask all this in his holy, awesome name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.